A um, couple of things that I wanted to sort of mention about um, course books and classroom culture. Do you remember at the beginning of um, the session, I talked a little bit about culture and the effect of culture in, in the classroom. We all come from different backgrounds and we bring in our own expectations. So as I mentioned before, students bring in their expectations into the classrooms and teachers have their expectations. And they are all linked to our culture and the way that we do things. Now, I know that in China, for the most part, and this is very, very difficult for Chinese teachers, most classes in China, everybody, the teacher teaches, and the students listen. And they don't ask questions. They listen, they take notes, they do what they're told, and at the end of the class, they can go out and they can ask the teacher questions. Nod, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Except in the English classes or the language classes. Because in 2003, the new curriculum said no more. Mm -mm -mm. In the English classes, you have to teach communicatively. So your students have to speak in the classes. So that, unless you were somebody who was in that in China, then you wouldn't have had that experience at that time. But it's difficult because those poor teachers had to say to their students, how many of you uh, were those English teachers then? Had to say to their students, okay, you're in a different classroom now because you're not Chinese anymore. In this classroom, you're English. In this classroom, you're English. And because you're English, you can talk to each other. You can talk to each other. And you can ask questions. You can ask questions. And you can do activities. Now, why does the teacher have to say, to, say that to those students in China? Why does the teacher say, you can do it now? You can do it in this class. Why do they have to say that? Yeah. Why do they have to say you can talk in the class? Otherwise? It's usually in silence. Usually in silence, or as you said? Otherwise they'll be told off. The otherwise they'll be told off, yeah. Okay. Big size, yeah. So there's also fear, isn't there? Oh my God, I'm going to lose control. They're going to go mad. But in fact, that's not the case, because if you click the glass, or you say, if you misbehave, no more activities. And they, don't, they, they like the activities. So it, it does actually, it's a routine, having a routine. But what we're going to do right now is to look very simply now at some of the key things that you want to do before you do a listening. Now, you do listenings, and as I said before, how important it is to do them in the classroom. Because for us, we don't recognize. It helps us to know the different sounds of Chinese. The more we hear things, the more we become familiar with the sound of Chinese in conversation. And that's really important because if you live in a country, you hear that. If you don't live in a country, you don't hear it. You're going to set a task, something for your students to do, to listen for. But before, you want to prepare them so they're ready to listen. And to do that, you want to motivate them because listening is not something you feel motivated about. You, you automatically go, the students will go <gasps> like this in the classroom. I can't. When you want them to go, yeah, let's. OK? So you want to focus them with something to do. You want to create interest first in the topic. Then you want to use their knowledge. They have knowledge of the topic. It might not be in Chinese, but they do have knowledge of the topic. So you need to use that knowledge and get that knowledge from here to here. And then you can use that knowledge to do this. Can you all see this? And that is to pre-teach, to pre-teach some vocabulary. Anybody know what this is? No. Pressure. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> It's, it is for English. It's pronunciation, stress, and intonation. But in, for, for Chinese, all of those are important as well because you've got the tones as well. So the intonation, you have intonation, but you also have the tones. So it makes it very 
more difficult to recognize and understand. And these are really, really important because these are the key things your students are going to listen for. If they don't know how to pronounce them, are they going to hear them? What do you think? No. So they need to know how to pronounce them in order to be able to hear them. So you've got that and it's really important. Then you can maybe use some prediction. You've got their knowledge, you get them thinking about the topic and what they're going to hear. Okay? What they're going to hear. And that's before we set a task. Before we set a task. So we're going to do some listening in a minute from the book. You are your beginners, elementary, elementary students here. You know something because you've been taught something. You have some knowledge. Some of your students may have lived in China. Some of them may have Chinese friends. They may have some familiarity, okay? So you're going to think about what vocabulary you know about this, okay? And I'll go to the next one. Forget about this one. This is the one I want you to focus on, sports vocabulary, okay? Now I'm going to do two things at the same time here because I'm also going to, because we're going to do a reading <coughs> later on, because we're going to do a reading later on, I'm going to do a, you do a similar sort of thing for reading. All the things you want any kind of reading or listening you want to do the same kind of pre-activities. And I will go back to that, okay? So, we're going to do, this one is for a listening. And I want you to imagine you are your elementary students. What vocabulary do you know? And over here, this one is for a reading. Places in a town, places in a city. But do it together. Talk, everybody say a word, write it down. Everybody say a word, write it down. Start with one. Um, okay, you do the chungsa, you do the sports. On this side you do sports, on this side you do chungsa. So if you've got a pen, can you stand up? Okay, right, now this time I want, you're only going to write one word. So you, because you're only going to write one word, or two words maximum, you can do it quite quickly. So you have to run up and write a word. All right, so what has to go in the instructions? If you want your students to write in Chinese characters, what has to go in the instructions? Write big. Write big so that we can see. So that we can see. Now, the other thing is, if these are elementary students, can the elementary students write in the Chinese? No. Okay, so be aware of that, that they will be writing in your pinyin yeah. rather than the, in, in the Chinese characters. But if they're higher level students, like some of the university students, they, can they do it? Yes. Yeah. yes, good. But the difficulty is, can they do it quickly? No. no. Okay, so you give them the choice to do both, as you've just done, as you've just done here. Good, okay. If you see a mistake, and this, the advantage of this kind of activity is, nobody knows who made the mistake. We've got a mistake, but who's going to correct it? No, the teacher's not going to correct it. Okay, who's going to correct it? Students, good. Okay, so you saw a mistake, you're a student, can you go see what it is? Good. So this gives you, the teacher, a good idea of what they know and what you have to teach because it also gives you an idea what they don't know or what they don't remember. So if something is going to be in the listening and it's not up there, then what does it mean you need to do? Teach it. <laughs> exactly.